The latest Snapdragon chipset 8 Gen 1 performs up to 41% higher than its last predecessor Snapdragon 888 Plus. So can we just assume that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 would be performing around 40% higher than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and then 8 Gen 3 to do so and so on? The simple answer is no. To know why, we'd have to know how performance is improved in a chipset. If we look at the processors over the year, we can see one clear trend that the size of the processors have decreased over the year and the performance not to mention has definitely increased. For example, the first Snapdragon 800 chip which was released back in 2013 was a 28 nanometer chipset and the latest agent one is just 4 nanometer. Let's consider the flagship processor of 2022 has a size of 4 nanometer and has 100 transistors. Now to double the performance in 2024, we'll have to fit 200 transistors inside this 4 nanometer chipset. Basically doubling the number of transistors will double the performance. Looks like a pretty straightforward task. Or is it? Because to fit more transistors inside the same chipset, the size of each transistor also has to shrink significantly. For context, the current 4 nanometer chipset has 10 billion transistors. So you can clearly imagine how tiny they already are. Now if you want to fit more transistors inside this chipset, the only option is to reduce the size of each transistor. But somewhere down the line, the transistors will reach its physical limit. Which means they cannot be smaller anymore. So does that mean the future smartphones will be faster? Well, they have to be. Otherwise, how would they sell us the same phone with a higher price? But Apple has already done something groundbreaking regarding this issue. You might have heard about the chip M1 Ultra, probably by far the most powerful processor in the computer industry. So how did they do that? They basically stacked two M1 chipset on top of each other and interconnected them. So can you just apply the same for Android smartphones? Maybe interconnect two 8 Gen 1 chips and make 8 Gen 2? Well, not so fast, because that would increase the size of the chipset and would make it less efficient. Seems like manufacturer would have to do some black magic to achieve performance like Apple. Besides this, using a dedicated chipset will also improve the performance in a smartphone so that is always an easier option to go for but in a nutshell we may not see much improvement in terms of performance in a smartphone in future now let's talk about the most important aspect of a smartphone for most of us the cameras three lenses are pretty much a basic requirement for a good smartphone nowadays and i don't think we need more lenses in a smartphone camera in the near future and when it comes to the main lens android devices are throwing numbers while apple is showing us how 12 megapixel is good enough to beat all of them even though Android devices do not shy away from flexing their 108 megapixel sensors, but people don't buy it just because of the number. Till that, it's pretty safe to go for a Pixel or an iPhone if you want the best camera on a specific budget. In near future, brands like Xiaomi or Vivo will add a 200 megapixel sensor, at least for the sake of making headlines. But the battle of quality will simply belong to Apple, Samsung, and Pixel just because how powerful their softwares are. Talking about softwares, the next big thing in smartphone cameras I think would be portrait video. Already iPhone has cinematic video and Samsung is also offering it. In fact the video you are watching right now is taken from a Samsung device. For me the one to offer a closer to perfect portrait video mode will have an edge in smartphone cameras. And when underdogs are done experimenting with under display cameras, we might get to see them in Apple and Samsung as well. Let's now talk about the battery. Thankfully, we are living in an era where battery backup is not a problem. Almost every single smartphone out there is offering at least 4000 mAh battery, but the real battle begins, how fast can you really charge? Okay, so Vivo IQ7 currently holds the title of the fastest charging smartphone in the world so far in 2022. The phone comes with a 120 watt fast charger that can charge the 4000 mAh battery in just 18 minutes. Now that is already exceptional but it comes with a cost. The 4000 mAh battery cell is divided into two 2000 mAh batteries and the 120 watt first charger charges them as 65 watts simultaneously. So it's not a truly 120 watt first charging. Nonetheless, it's so impressive to charge a 4000 mAh cell in just 18 minutes. And Xiaomi with their next flagship may just raise the bar even higher because they are working on a 200 watt first charger that can charge a 4000 mAh cell in just 8 minutes. Now that may sound absolutely crazy, but what's crazier is graphene technology. And graphene batteries have been proven to have much higher capacity on an average than lithium-ion batteries, even at a smaller size. The lithium-ion batteries can store up to 180 watt-hour per kilogram, while graphene can store up to 1000 watt-hour. In fact, graphene aluminium cells are 60 times faster than lithium-ion batteries. And this could mean in the future we might get to charge our phone in just a few seconds. 
seconds. Now that would be absolutely mind-blowing. Smartphone displays are getting blindingly brighter and sharper every year. We already have smartphone displays with 4K resolution and 240Hz of refresh rate. Foldables and rollables have also become a thing. So what can we expect about smartphone displays in future? Smartphones in 2030 could have holographic display technology which could render 3D images or videos that would float above the device. And they can be viewed from any angle without needing to wear a 3D glass. Imagine watching a movie or playing games on a display like this. Good luck to screen protector makers in advance. So lastly now let's talk about the design. To be honest, smartphone designs have become a little bit boring now. So how smartphone should look like in the future? If you are thinking of a perfectly clear transparent smartphone straight from a sci-fi movie, well I don't think that's possible. Yes, it's possible to make a transparent display, but we have already seen it. But what about the battery? What about the processor? Everything will have to be transparent to make an absolutely transparent phone. So let's keep that aside for a moment and let's talk about the reality. I think smartphones have become a productivity device for a lot of us. And in that case, a bigger display really helps. To solve this issue, we already have foldables and rollables. In this battle, I think rollable will have an edge over the foldables because a display without a crease will be much preferred. And at least for sure, we would get to see a lot of smartphones with under display camera technologies featuring a fully interruptionless user experience. And also SIM card slots might disappear if eSIM takes over. So that was it guys. So what do you think future smartphones should be like? Let's talk about that in the comment section. And if you have watched this video this far, a sub to the channel would really make my day. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Asha Kori, Abarodakhove.